Episode 2 of Station 19 Season 7 starts with Andy and Natasha telling Gibson he can't return to work. Gibson hopes things change, but Andy holds back her tears and tells him he can't be a firefighter anymore. She, however, assures him that 19 will always be there for him. Jack leaves to pack his stuff, and the other members try to console him. Gibson says he is fine, but he isn't. The team is called to line up, and Andy announces they will have dinner in honor of Gibson later that night. She then proceeds to give everyone their respective duties for the day. Kate tries to get out of restocking the clinic, and Andy offers desk duty. After the lineup, Sullivan advises Andy to give orders instead of negotiating. On the other hand, Theo tries to clear the air with Kate. She keeps making jokes about them finally getting together. She says she is open to having fun, but a call comes in before Theo can respond to her proposition. He leaves with Ben to handle a Crisis One call. The call concerns a woman living with her son. The woman, Connie, is sick and on dialysis. Ben notices marks on her hands, and the neighbor tells Theo that Connie's son is aggressive. Apparently, the son goes from zero to sixty in a flash and has been taking it out on his mom. However, Connie is in denial and tries to protect her son, who gets angry after finding Theo and Ben in the house. He leaves after another argument and starts cleaning his guns. This forces Theo to call for backup while Ben tries to get Connie to see the reality of the situation. Connie excuses her son's behavior, saying he is angry about life. Who isn't? Ben explains it is okay to be angry but not violent. As they talk, the son loses his patience with the neighbor's dog and shoots at it. The police are called in, but since he only fired near the dog, the police can only give him a citation. The police believe the son when he claims he was defending himself from the dog. Ben is frustrated and tries to talk to Connie, urging her that her son will soon lose his temper and kill someone. He asks her to consider having her son's gun taken away, but she says that it infringes on his rights. She doesn't want him to lose his freedom. Ben points out that the son will lose his liberty soon when he goes to jail. Sadly, nothing convinces Connie to do the right thing, and she kicks Ben and Theo out. Elsewhere, we see Vic taking Beckett to his uncle's funeral, who died from alcoholism. The family is Irish and is holding the wake at a bar. This is Vic's first Irish wake, and she is in for a surprise. The whole time, Beckett's family tries to get him to drink even after he mentions he is just from rehab. Vic does her best, and Beckett remains alert, but it is hectic. The wake ends with some family members getting into a fight and someone's nose being broken. Vic and Beckett try to help, but the drunk dad tells the son to cauterize his wound with a hot spoon. You can guess that didn't end well. At the end of the wake, Vic offers Beckett a chance to join Crisis One. As for our philandering Travis, he brings Eli with him to Dixon's funeral service. Eli hangs around for a while, mingling with the guests, but later leaves. Travis decides to stay back and help, but sleeps with Emmett again. Why does he keep doing this to Eli? To make matters worse, he doesn't seem remorseful. Before Travis leaves the house, Kitty acknowledges that 19 did their best to save Dixon. Back at the station, Gibson tries to help with the clinic, but Karina sends him home. It is a busy day at the clinic, and things get overwhelming when a woman starts showing signs of a viral disease. Andy puts the station on lockdown until they diagnose the woman. The woman recently traveled outside the country, so everyone is worried she has Ebola. One of the clinic's patients worries about her daughter, who has cerebral palsy. The child's immunity system can't survive a viral attack. Thankfully, Sullivan helps to keep everyone calm and safe as Andy, Natasha, Karina, and Maya work on patient zero. Thankfully, they discover she suffers from dengue fever, which is not contagious. While all this goes on, a former patient of Karina who was at the clinic is disappointed when Karina doesn't recognize her. It turns out she has a beef with Karina and sues her for what happened five years ago during the birth of her daughter. 
Did Karina make a mistake that caused the child to suffer from cerebral palsy? She is scared about the timing of the legal suit, and Maya tries to comfort her. After a hectic day, Sullivan cutely proposes to Natasha, and she says maybe. Andy realizes Gibson left his helmet and asks Ben and Theo to get him. She knew Gibson wouldn't be coming to his dinner. At the same time, Maya and Karina receive good news as foster parents. Their application was successful and they rush to pick up Liam. Connie also shows up at the station and asks Ben to help her fill out the petition to take her son's guns temporarily. As they wait for Gibson, the team tells each other about their day. Andy orders Sullivan to run the clinic. Finally, Gibson arrives, and they have dinner. Everyone is happy and excited when Maya and Karina arrive with baby Liam. The episode ends with Gibson writing his name under the table per tradition. It is a sad scene and moment in Station 19's history. The team lies down with him as they each process what this means. The episode review. The closing scene got us in our feels. It must be hard for Gibson to lose what he loved the most. However, as Andy said, they will always be there for him as a family. When you think about it, Andy has always been there for Gibson more than his blood family. Through the ups and downs, this team has stuck together. It won't be easy, as Andy said, she always pictured Gibson being part of her team when she became captain. It is bittersweet that this is how the story unfolds. However, we have faith that 19 will pull through. On the other hand, Kate is so annoying. She keeps making the wrong jokes, saying how much she hates 19, and generally getting on our nerves. She is not to blame for what happened between Theo and Vic, but still, she rubs us the wrong way. We are happy for Maya and Karina, they are finally getting their dream. I hope they get to keep baby Liam. They will be amazing parents. However, we can't help but worry that the legal suit against Karina might jeopardize the couple's future. Speaking of futures, we have Sullivan, who keeps proposing to Natasha. While it might feel rushed, it would be nice if the series ends with their wedding. What do you think? As for Travis and Eli's future, we don't think they have one anymore. Lastly, it is good to see Beckett again, and we hope he takes Vic's offer and joins Crisis One.